Cetaceans is a group of mammals so highly adapted to aquatic life that some people still mistake them for fish. A group that includes some of the largest and most intelligent living creatures. Although their earliest evolutionary ancestors were a mystery until the late 70s, today cetacean fossils make up one of the most striking examples of transitional forms. Combined with molecular analysis, we now know them to be descendants of early even-toed ungulates, with their closest living relatives being hippopotamus. Indohias, a member of an extinct group of ungulates called Rayoelids, is the closest known sister group to cetaceans. The very earliest whales probably looked similar to this, small hoofed creatures completely unrecognizable compared to their modern aquatic descendants. Around 60 centimeters long, it had very dense bones similar to those of hippopotamus, and probably led a semi-aquatic lifestyle comparable to modern water chevrotains, diving into water and remaining submerged to evade predators. But its main link to whales actually comes from its ear bones, with its skull showing evidence of a special structure called the involucrum. The oldest of the pachycetids, the earliest true cetaceans, ichthyolests stood 40 centimeters tall at the shoulder, roughly the same size as a modern badger, and had a long snout full of sharp carnivorous teeth. It likely preyed on fish and small animals in and around freshwater rivers, although the structure of its limbs suggests it was more of a wader than a swimmer. It was originally described in the 50s, but at the time was mistakenly classified as a mesonychian a separate group of carnivorous ungulates that, fittingly enough, were once also thought to be the ancestors of whales. Straddling the two worlds of land and sea, the wolf-sized Pachycetus was a meat-eater that sometimes ate fish, according to chemical evidence. It lived along the margins of a large shallow ocean, the Tethys Sea. Although it had the body of a land animal, its head had the distinctive long skull shape of a whale's. It had upwards-facing eye sockets on the top of its head similar to those of crocodiles, suggesting it might have hunted in the same sort of way, wading in water almost completely submerged in order to ambush prey. While its limb bones were very dense to reduce buoyancy, they were still built more like those of terrestrial animals, and it probably moved much like a hippopotamus walking underwater. Its sense of hearing would also have been much better in air, as it lacked the lower jaw fat pads that later whales developed for directional hearing underwater. Ambulocetus is among the best studied of Eocene cetaceans, and serves as an instrumental find in the study of cetacean evolution and their transition from land to sea, as it was the first cetacean discovered to preserve a suite of adaptations consistent with an amphibious lifestyle. It had a narrow, streamlined body, and a long, broad snout, with eyes positioned at the very top of its head. Because of these features, it is hypothesized to have behaved much like a crocodile, wading near the water's surface to ambush large mammals, using its powerful jaws to clamp onto and drown or thrash prey. Additionally, its ears possessed similar traits to modern cetaceans, which are specialized for hearing and detecting certain frequencies underwater. It is thought to have swum much like an otter, tucking in its forelimbs while alternating its hind limbs for propulsion, as well as undulating the torso and tail. 
The area where it lived had a hot climate with tropical rainforests and coastal mangroves, and Ambulocetus may have predominantly inhabited brackish areas such as river mouths. Known from near shore and lagoon environments in Pakistan and India, Remington Acetus grew to about 3.5 meters long. While in the water it probably swam using a combination of undulatory movements and paddling with its hind limbs, similar to modern otters. Although not directly ancestral to any modern types of whales, the Remington Ocetids were an early experiment in cetacean evolution, with their long gharial-like snouts and small eyes. Their underwater hearing was very well developed, and was probably their primary sense while hunting, but their semicircular canals were reduced in size, suggesting that their sense of balance when on land was poor. Cuchicetus is smaller than other Remingtonocetids, and probably is the smallest Eocene cetacean. Its four fused sacral vertebrae were probably articulated to the hip bone and the numerous tail vertebrae were robust and elongated in contrast to its short and relatively gracile limb bones. This morphology suggests that the tail played an important role in its locomotion, yet the proportions of the caudalmost vertebrae indicates Cuchicetus did not have flukes. Its vertebral proportions are unlike those of any other cetaceans but similar to those of some land-living or semi-aquatic mammals. Its limbs were probably weight-bearing and it probably swam using undulatory movements. This mode of locomotion represents a transitional stage in whale evolution. Although most early whales are found in Pakistan and Indian, Rayonists was discovered all the way over in Egypt, suggesting that these early whales were much more widespread than previously thought, dispersing through the Tethys Sea at about the same time as their protoceded cousins. It had powerful hind limb musculature that would have given it a very strong kicking swimming stroke, but it probably couldn't actually support its own weight on land since its femur wasn't very well anchored into its pelvis. Named after the canine-headed ancient Egyptian god, Phyomycetus is the first fossil cetacean to discovered, described, and named entirely by a team of Arab paleontologists. Living in a shallow sea-covered region that is now part of Egypt's western desert, it was an early protoceted, an amphibious foot-powered swimmer, at a transitional point in the evolution of whales from deer-like terrestrial animals to fully aquatic screaming torpedoes. It had large jaw muscles and sharp teeth with wear patterns that suggest it was a raptorial hunter grabbing and snapping at prey with powerful bites. With the early whales rapidly diversifying and becoming more and more aquatic, protoceded whales colonized shallow warm oceans in Europe, Africa and North America. Myocetus is known from Pakistan, its nasal opening was partway up its snout, a first step towards a blowhole, but it still had well-developed hind limbs which were actively used for swimming. One fossil specimen represents a pregnant female and its unborn calf. The fetus is positioned for a head-first delivery, revealing that Myocetus probably still had to return to the shore to give birth, modern whales are born tail-first to avoid drowning, while land mammals are usually born head-first. One of the most well-known protocetids, Rhodocetus was a contemporary of Myocetus, it had body and limb proportions very similar to the modern Russian Desmond, and may have swum in the same manner. Its ankle bones were also important in confirming the true ancestry of whales. Rhodocetus is known from two partial skeletons that taken together give a complete image of an Eocene whale that had short limbs with long hands and feet that were probably webbed and a sacrum that was immobile with four partially fused sacral vertebrae. While Protocetus did not have a true blowhole, the nostrils were placed further back on the head than in most land mammals. The structure of the ears suggests that it was able to hear properly underwater, although it is unlikely that it could echolocate. 
Similarly, it retained sufficient olfactory apparatus to have a good sense of smell, although it probably relied more on its eyesight to find prey. Macaracetus was such an unusual protocetid that it's been classified in own unique little subfamily. It is notable for having a skull unlike any of its relatives, with a large nasal opening, a downward turned snout, and huge attachment points for facial muscles. It has been proposed that this whale had a trunk, because every weird fossil nose inevitably gets interpreted as a trunk. But Macaracetus certainly must have had a lot of soft tissue around its snout, and since its skull resembles something between a camel and a manatee it probably had some big fleshy muscular lips. By 40 million years ago some protocetids had become capable of crossing deep ocean waters, reaching the coasts of North America. Georgiacetus was probably around 4.5 meters long, with fossils known from southern United States. Its hip bones were completely separate from its spine, so while its hind limbs were still well developed and being utilized for swimming it wouldn't actually have been capable of supporting its own weight out of the water. And despite its known tail vertebrae not being shaped like those of later whales with full flukes, I've depicted it here with a small speculative protofluke. The protocetids were some of the first oceanic cetaceans, occupying a transitional position in the evolution of whales, with four paddle-like limbs and nostrils only partway up their snouts. Early members of this group swam like otters, but somewhere in the late Eocene they switched over to propelling themselves entirely with their tails and gave rise to even more whale-like forms like the Basilosaurids and Aegisetus was right in the middle of that switch. Its hips were completely disconnected from its vertebrae, giving it much more flexibility to undulate its body and tail. It wasn't a direct ancestor to more advanced cetaceans, since it lived alongside several species of Basilosaurids. Basilosaurus were originally thought to be of a giant reptile, hence the suffix saurus, ancient Greek for lizard. The animal was later found to be an early marine mammal, which prompted attempts at renaming the creature, which failed as the rules of zoological nomenclature dictate using the original name given. Basilosaurus is thought to have been common in the Tethys Ocean. It was one of the largest animals of the Paleogene and was the top predator of its environment, preying on sharks, large fish and other marine mammals. It may have been one of the first fully aquatic cetaceans. Unlike modern cetaceans, it had various types of teeth, such as canines and molars, in its mouth, and it probably was able to chew its food in contrast to modern cetaceans which swallow their food whole. The head of Basilosaurus did not have room for a melon like modern toothed whales, and the brain was smaller in comparison, as well. They are not believed to have had the social capabilities of modern whales. Paracetus was a chonker, an absolute unit of a whale. Living during the Eocene in shallow marine waters covering what is now the coast of Peru, this ancient whale is known from several vertebrae, ribs, and parts of its pelvis. It was probably somewhere around 17 to 20 meters long. It had thick dense bones, suggesting that its full body mass was much higher than the rather slender Basilosaurus, and possibly heavier than even modern blue whales despite being shorter in overall length. Paracetus thickened vertebrae were also fairly inflexible in most directions, indicating it was a Cyrenian-like slow swimmer with limited maneuverability, but it did have a surprisingly good ability to bend its body downwards. Without skull material it's unclear what its diet was like, but it may have been a suction feeder hoovering up seafloor prey like modern gray whales or walruses. Antecetus had a proportionally smaller head and smaller teeth than other basilosaurids, along with much denser bones and a stiffer spine that would have made it a rather slow swimmer with reduced maneuverability. It was probably a slow-moving coastal water animal somewhat like modern Cyrenians. Its relatively delicate teeth suggest it was feeding on soft-bodied prey like cephalopods, 
and with its lack of speed it must have been some sort of ambush predator, waiting around for potential prey to come within striking range. Zygoriza had a body similar to modern cetaceans with flipper-like forelimbs, rudimentary hind limbs, a vertebral column adapted for oscillatory swimming, and a tail fluke. It replaced their upper and lower deciduous first premolars with permanent teeth. This is very unusual in modern mammals and contrasts to extant toothed whales that only develop a single set of teeth. It might indicate that it represents a stage in archaeocete evolution where skeletal maturation was delayed like in modern cetaceans. Dorodon is a good example of some of the many primitive whales that were swimming in the world's oceans during the Eocene period. As an early cetacean, it was a dedicated predator of other marine creatures that may have included everything from fish to other marine mammals. Dorodon itself does bear a strong resemblance to the much larger Basilosaurus that was also swimming in the same waters and at the same time as Dorodon. This led to early speculation about Dorodon actually representing juvenile specimens of Basilosaurus, however more in-depth study as well as the discoveries of actual Dorodon juveniles has since quashed this theory. Here's one unusual member of that subfamily. Although Ankylocetus was closely related to Dorodon, it had reduced forelimbs with limited mobility that were held very close to the sides of its body, anatomy unlike any modern whales, and suggesting that its flippers weren't being used for steering. It was obviously specialized for a specific type of feeding, but just what that was is still unknown. Like other members of this group, Tetsidus probably would have had a rather long and slender body shape, but unlike most of its relatives, it was comparatively tiny, estimated to only have been around 2.5 meters long. The fusion of the skull bones in the one known fossil specimen indicate it was almost fully grown at the time of its death, and the pattern of tooth replacement suggests this small basilosaurid species matured very rapidly, a sort of live fast, die young life strategy.